If you're here to research your upcoming trip to Lombok, then you're in the right place. I'm Joel, and after my second trip to Lombok, I've put together this comprehensive guide for everything you will need to know. Later on in the video, I'll give you my top seven places you must visit in Lombok, so stay tuned for that. Lombok is the island next to famous Bali, well known for its island surfing and beautiful beaches, but there is so much more to see here. Let's start off with how to get to Lombok, and if you're coming from the Gili Islands, then you're gonna need to take a speedboat and a land transfer. This can normally be booked at your hotel or travel agency. Now another very popular way of getting to Lombok is from the Lombok International Airport, Praia Airport, which is just about half an hour from Kuta. From the airport you can take just 150k taxi to Kuta town if that's where you're basing yourself in Lombok. If you're coming from Bali, which is probably a very popular thing, then a good way is to take the speedboat. However, this lands in Bang Sao Harbour, which is right in the northwest of Lombok near the Gili Islands. So you're going to have to take a long land transfer if you're going to Kuta. The speedboats are also much more expensive, so the other option if if you are on a budget is to take the public ferry. This is only going to put you back about 60k and it lands in Lembar Port, which is right in the south of Lombok, not too far from Kuta. From there you can take a taxi. Let's move on to transport and how to actually get around the island of Lombok. Now there's a couple of options and one of the first options is taxis. As you'll notice, as soon as you arrive in Lombok, the traffic and the roads are so much better than neighbouring Bali. You can get to anywhere on the island using taxis and these can range from about 150k all the way up to 600k. So these taxis are still very affordable. Just to note, unlike Bali, in Lombok there's no grab taxis, there's no Gojek, so you're going to have to use the local taxis, but just make sure you bargain the prices. Now finally, the best way to get around Lombok is probably by moped. It just gives you so much freedom to just hop on, go to the next spot, as a lot of the locations in Lombok are actually quite far apart. One thing to note about mopeds is make sure you are fully licensed to drive it and make sure you wear a helmet. Don't be stupid. Now if you're landing in Lombok, you probably don't know where to stay, and there's a few different options, but by far the most popular place to stay is in Kuta Lombok, right on the south coast of the island. Kuta is a famous chilled out surf town and is honestly so peaceful. So if you're looking for a bit more of a laid back holiday, then it's a great place to come, surf and chill. And in Kuta, there's loads of cool quirky cafes like Bali, and I'll talk about them in a minute. Now, one of the other popular places to stay in Lombok is actually Sengigi, which is much closer to the Gili Islands. So if you're coming from there, this is not a bad place to stay. Sengigi has a beautiful coastline. There's some great spots to watch the sunset. Generally in Lombok, you get a little bit better value than Bali, but that's just because it's a little less touristy. Now, if you're a foodie or a big coffee lover, then this is the section for you. I'm gonna talk about all the little quirky, cool cafe shops in Lombok. All of these recommendations are actually gonna be in Kuta, as that's where most people tend to stay and where all the cool cafes actually are. If you know me, I do love my coffee and the best coffee, and they even say it on a sign, is Milk Espresso. We had coffee there most mornings and it's honestly so good. You're gonna love it if you love a good coffee. They also do some other little cafe bits, so if you're hungry, get some food as well. You can't have a good food town without a good pizza and Mama Pizza, a little bit more on the expensive side, but honestly, it will just hit those taste buds so well. Just one thing to note about the restaurants, they all seem to charge about two or three percent if you use a card, unlike Bali, so just keep that, note it down, do, do something with that. If you're in Lombok and a bit more on the budget size, then I've got the next place for you, that is the Wirren, just the Wirren. It's really affordable food and is still very good quality. If you're on a budget, or even if you're not on a budget, I highly recommend it, it's great there. A great place for Western food is Crink. We had fajitas there a couple of times and they were amazing. But they also do burgers, I think burritos, pizza, other bits as well. Very good food and a bit of a good atmosphere there in the evenings. Let's move on to the next section and that is surfing. Lombok is famous for its surfing. It's got great waves, much emptier waves than neighboring Bali and you're just gonna love it out there. However, the one big thing that not really anyone tells you before you get there is you actually have to take a boat out to most of the spots because the bigger waves are actually quite far out. If you're more of a learner, then you can actually do it at some of the beaches. The best beach for beginner surfers is Selom Balanak. It's also a beautiful beach. I'll tell you more about that later. There's quite a few different surf schools in Kuta Lombok. The one we used was Heart Beach Lombok. I'll put their Instagram here. Lessons generally cost between 500k to 600k per person, and so a little bit on the more expensive side, but you can probably turn up at the beach, at one of the beaches, and get it a little bit cheaper if you don't want to go through a bigger company. Just a little tip. If you're there for a longer time and you want to focus on surfing, you can do surf camps from a lot of the different companies as well. 
After talking about surfing in the Lombok, surfing does come at a risk. And that's why whenever Amelia and I travel, we are always covered with Nomad Insurance with Safety Ring. And Safety Ring are the partners of today's video. I love surfing in Lombok and I literally can't wait to do more in the future. But having that reassurance that I'm covered whilst out on the waves is very comforting. Safety Ring will cover you for lots of different activities whilst you're traveling, which is very important if you're quite adventurous like me. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the best way to get around Lombok is by moped and accidents do happen. So it is vital to be covered. So if anything happens to go wrong, you would be comforted knowing you have the insurance to fall back on. And there are lots of other benefits to Nomad Insurance with coverage for lost luggage, travel delays, natural disasters, and personal liability. If you're like us and on the road for a little bit of a longer time, we actually use Safe Doing's automatic monthly payment scheme. So we don't forget to renew our insurance. If you're traveling to Lombok soon or anywhere in the world, make sure you get yourself covered with a reputable company like Safe Doing, and you'll be protected if something happens to go wrong. Click the link in the description to get yourself covered with Safetwing. Let's move on to the top seven places you must visit in Lombok, starting with number seven, Pink Beach, which isn't that pink. This beach is right in the southwest of Lombok on that little sticky out peninsula and the best way to get there is either by moped or hiring a driver. It takes about an hour and a half to get to this part of the island from Kuta town. Now it is a beautiful beach but there are some things you need to know. It is not quite as pink as the Instagram pictures say. And two, make sure you go at high tide because at low tide it gets a quite seaweedy so just take that into account it's not that easy to go swimming. Now number six somewhere I actually mentioned earlier is Selon Balanak beach which is probably the best beach in all of Lombok. It is a massive huge white sand beach on the south coast 30 minutes away from Kuta town. Otherwise there's actually loads of little beach huts so you can get some food or drinks or whatever you want. It's also a very popular surf beginner beach so if you're looking to just start off your surfing career then this is the beach for you. Selon Balanak beach is actually 10k for the parking fee and each beach around Kuta is about 10k. It might just vary a little bit. Another beach I highly recommend is actually Mauan beach which is just 15 minutes from Kuta. It's beautiful and has a big hill at the end of the beach. The entry fee is just 10k and there's lots of beach huts so you can get more food and drinks there. Now number five is actually Gili Kondo and this is another set of Gili Islands not on the northwest of Lombok but actually on the north central east side and this is very close to Sambawa Island the big island next to Lombok. We actually went to these islands when we were staying in Sengigi and honestly these islands are beautiful and really untouched by tourists. There's lots of different islands and there's even a little sandbar island just full of sand. Make sure you go at lower tide because otherwise it will just be like a little infinity pool. Now number four is the famous Mount Rinjani. If you're gonna do Mount Rinjani, then it's actually a two day or three day hike. So be prepared, it is a lot of climbing. This mountain is actually 3,726 meters. So it's pretty high. The views at the top are supposed to be incredibly rewarding. And there's actually a big, massive crater in the middle with a lake and like a forest area which is pretty crazy for the top of a volcano. I actually got recommended one of the tours and I'll leave a link to the Rinjani hike tour in the description. And if you're in the Rinjani area then one place I highly recommend is Sambulan town which is a little mountain town in the north of Lombok and it honestly has incredible views of Mount Rinjani but also the other mountain region. You must visit Bukit Salong which is a beautiful viewpoint overlooking all the farming fields where you can actually get strawberries which are like my favorite fruit. It's well worth going here for sunset or sunrise. You get incredible views of the surrounding mountains. Now moving on to number three is actually the secret gillies. And if you watched a couple of videos ago, I actually made a whole vlog on the secret gillies. So go watch that if you want some more information on these beautiful islands. These set of islands are actually found in the southwest of Lombok, so towards the Bali side. And these islands are so peaceful, uninterrupted with loud tourists, unlike the gillies up in the north. If you're looking for a more peaceful, then these set of islands are going to be for you. We actually swam with turtles there and were surrounded with so many fish and without any other tourists, which is very unlikely if you're in the other Gili Islands where apparently it's just a swarm of people surrounding you. We even saw a turtle poop. Pretty crazy, I know. I didn't know turtles actually poop. It's pretty cool. If you're looking to actually stay on some of these islands, there's two islands you can actually stay on. That is Gili Gade and Gili Ashahan. 
I think that's how I pronounce it. We're closing in on the top number one, but first we've got number two, Teta Bato. This is a beautiful, peaceful village, which surprised me so much. This is honestly like a little mini Ubud, but without all the yogury kind of all that stuff. We stayed at a beautiful homestay called Flush Harmony, and it had incredible views of Mount Rinjani with rice fields and a beautiful pool as well. Now, Teta Bato is somewhere I'd come if you're really looking for somewhere to chill out. It is so peaceful. The locals are really friendly, and there's a couple of waterfalls I highly recommend checking out. The first waterfall is called Jeruk Manis, which means sweet orange. This waterfall doesn't really have any oranges or anything, but that's the name. And it's honestly such a beautiful 25 minute walk. It's 20K per person entry fee. And once you get there, we had this place all to ourselves at 11 a.m. Pretty crazy. You would never get that in Ubud or Bali. The second waterfall is called Sarong Wallet Waterfall and it goes through a little cave kind of tunnel system and then you arrive at this beautiful little waterfall at the end. Again, the entry fee to this waterfall is 20k. Like Ubud, Teta Batu actually has a monkey forest of its own, but it actually has two types of monkeys, a black ebony monkey and then the usual macaques you get all over Bali. It's very different to the Ubud monkey forest. This place is super natural and you actually just have to walk in the forest and just look for yourself for monkeys. They aren't looking for food and they're generally quite scared of you. There's also a few hikes you can do around the area, so ask your hotel you are staying at in Teta Batu for some recommendations. Now, Number one, this is one of my favorite things I've done in all of Lombok, and that's are the waterfalls. The big waterfalls in the north you see all over Instagram. Now let me try and pronounce their names. Sedan Gile Waterfall and Tio Kilet Waterfall comment if I got that wrong, as I probably did. You actually only need to pay for one entry fee, which is 20K per person, and you go on a walk, you will see the first waterfall, and then about 20 minutes later, you'll see the second waterfall. We were super lucky, and it started raining, so we were the only ones at the second waterfall, and honestly, these are some of the best waterfalls I have seen in all of Indonesia. At the entry, they will try and pressure you to take a guide, but you do not need a guide. It's a very easy path, and it kind of takes you to both of the waterfalls. I highly recommend checking these out because it was one of my favorite things I did in all of Lombok. Going to the waterfalls from Kuta is a very long way, so I highly recommend staying a night or two up in the north and yeah, doing the waterfalls from there. So guys, that is everything I had in this comprehensive guide of Lombok. If you really did find this useful, please go down and hit subscribe because I've got loads more travel guides and stuff like this coming to help you travel Lombok, Indonesia, and hopefully all of the world. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. See you then. Bye.